to my channel. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. As you guys know, I am currently doing a no buy challenge for 2022. And so for each month I've sort of created some some sub challenges, some things to sort of keep me motivated, to keep you guys motivated and just like, yeah, keep up the motivation throughout the challenge. I'm just gonna sit down on a chair here. This month, it's March, it's all about wardrobe care and mending your clothing. Um, so I have actually collected a handful of items here. I've laid them out in front of me here on our dining table that needs mending and that needs a bit extra TLC basically. Um, I have a list here as well that I created while I was building my spring capsule wardrobe. You might already have watched that video where I kind of reveal my spring capsule wardrobe for this year. Um, and during that whole process of building that capsule wardrobe, I noted down any items that need a bit of extra love. I've had quite a few busy weeks and a lot of busy days lately, so I thought this is a nice way to sort of collect my thoughts, to sort of ground myself and just chill out for a little while. I find it really soothing somehow and very like relaxing and sort of almost meditative to take care of my, my favorite clothes like this. Um, and instead of just doing it on my own, I thought I wanted to create a little vlog and then hopefully it will inspire you guys to do the same. Maybe you can whip out your own favorite wardrobe care tools and some items from your own wardrobe while watching this video and then we can sort of mend together. That's the whole idea with this video anyway. If you want some more inspiration on specific ideas on how to care for your wardrobe and specific items within your wardrobe. I recently wrote a blog post where I've sort of gathered up some of the various guides that I've been sharing through time. So I'll link that for you right here. I'll also link it down below for you so you can go have a look at that after watching this video. In any case, when it comes to a long lasting and sustainable wardrobe, wardrobe care is so important. And that's also why I wanted to sort of have that as a focus for one of the months during this uh, no buy challenge. So this this is the current state of our dining table. Um, I've just basically gotten all of the items that I wrote down on my list here out, made myself a cup of coffee, and then I'm just gonna have a nice time here just mending and caring for my wardrobe. Gonna put on a nice playlist as well. So first of all, we've got a couple of jeans here. Um, the first of which are my good old Dr. Denim jeans that I've had for at least five years now. If you're regular here on my channel, you might recognize these. These are the ones with the raw hem that I've been wearing nonstop um, before I got pregnant. And then I had a long time where I didn't fit them. I do fit them now, so I've gotten them out from, ducked them out from storage, but they are looking a bit worn out to say the least. The knees here are a bit worn out, the, the overall color is a bit washed down um, and although I find that to be a cool look for some types of jeans, I do like to have these just like a jet black. I'm gonna freshen up the color of these. I did do that in a recent video so I'm not gonna get too much into it. If you want, like I just mentioned before, if you want to watch any of my like older wardrobe care videos, you can go have a look at how I do that. This time around I bought uh, this one from Dulon or Dylan, however you want to pronounce it. Basically these are little sheets with like a color refresh product inside of them that you can then place in the washing machine with any black items that you want to refresh the color of and then they should look as good as new. So I'm just gonna start popping those in the washing machine. So you just pop it into the machine like this, then you run like a normal 40 degree cycle. And then afterwards you obviously take out the pants, leave them to dry, you put this little thing in the bin, and then you can just sort of like wipe the edges of the washing machine here. So that's basically how you do it. Um, I have another item here that needs washing. Um, or rather stain removal because this is an older top from People Tree. Again, some of you might recognize it. I wore it quite a lot the, the year that I bought it. I think I bought it back in 2018 maybe. Won't be wearing this before the summertime probably because to me this is, is more like a summery kind of item. Um, it will look very cool with like light wash denim jeans, a denim skirt, anything like that. But yeah, it's a really cute top. The only problem with this top is that it's actually gotten stained by sunscreen. 
So I'm not sure if it's coming off on camera here, but there are definitely some like yellow stains here and there on the top. Um, I think it's a bit hard to see on the camera, but it just has sort of like a yellow overcast some places. For that purpose, I've actually uh, a while back bought this. So this is the allergy certified and version and also the one that has the Nordic Swan label, meaning that this is more eco-friendly. It's also without perfume. This is something I cannot live without, especially after becoming a mom. I always used to say that I didn't like to use products like Vanish until I realized that they actually have one that is developed for sensitive skin and people with allergies. Um, so this is the, the slightly less harsh version, which I think is great. And it's really, really good. Like whenever my daughter has a stain on any of her clothing, I'll just um, put a mixture of this and water directly onto the stain and then wash it normally. And then just that just takes care of it. So again, this is a great way to make sure your clothing will last for a long time. And I'm also hoping that by soaking this in a solution of this and then water, hopefully the stains will disappear. So we'll have to see about that. have my wool coat here. One major thing I need to do with my wool coat is to remove all of the bubbles because obviously I've been wearing it a lot during winter. Um, and that's definitely starting to show. There's like a lot of bubbles, a lot of hair all over as well. So I'm gonna use my reusable lint remover here to remove any like hairs and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna use my uh, fabric shaver from Steamery as well, uh, but essentially it's a tool that can remove bubbles from the surface there just with a little like electric shaver there. It's gonna do that. Then I'm also gonna fix the pockets of this coat because um, since this is a secondhand purchase, it's obviously been worn a lot. And I believe there's a rather large hole inside of one of these pockets. I can't really remember which one of them. I actually think there's a little hole in this one as well. Um, but anyway, there's a hole in one of the pockets that I just need to sew back together uh, Because every time I put my keys in that pocket They'll just like disappear all the way into the lining and to the bottom of the jacket. It's, it's, it's a mess Speaking of bubbles and removing fuss from wool garments. I have a pile of wool jumpers here I have my beloved sweater from navy gray that one could do with a bit of um yeah, a bit of a, a fabric shave, basically. I need to remove all these little bubbles. The same thing actually with the jumper I'm wearing today. This is the jumper from Armed Angels. I've been wearing nonstop all throughout autumn and winter. I love this jumper and it's definitely starting to see that I've worn it a lot. So I just need to remove some of the little bubbles on the surface of this one as well. And then the same with these two items. I have my navy blue organic basics jumper and then my good old gray cardigan that could do with a bit of bubble removal as well. Then over here we have a navy blue blazer. Um, I'm not sure if you guys if you guys have ever seen this blazer. I bought it I think during autumn last year. Um, it's a secondhand blazer that I found on West Year Collective. I believe it's from Paul Smith. I'm not sure. Let me just see. Yeah it's from Paul Smith. Um, bought it on West Year Collective in a European size 38, but I don't know if this is because it's uh, sort of, you know, an item made in Italy. In any case, it's definitely not like my usual size 38 because it's very tight, especially around the shoulders. I'll show you um, when we get a little bit further along into the video. Um, but yeah, basically I just find it a bit too tight, a bit too snug, especially around the arms and the shoulders. So I'm not going to do anything about this specific blazer today. I'm actually going to hand it over to my local tailor and then have her let it out for me. Just even just a couple of centimeters. I think there should probably be some like seam allowance in here somewhere. There's some darts there that you could probably sort of, yeah, I don't know, loosen or whatever, whatever magic she, magic tricks she, she has that she can use. Just remember that I made a cup of coffee that I need to drink before it gets cold. So yeah, that's basically what I'm gonna do today. Um, 
we have a lot of knitwear care obviously because we just went through winter and I really want to make sure that also the knitwear that I pack away any like leather shoes I pack away like my combat boots that I bought last year I'll pack those away I actually did just give them a round of like leather treatment and then some um what's that called like a protective spray yesterday to sort of keep the leather protected so that now they're nice and clean they're nice and moisturized and ready to to wear again next winter and that's sort of something i like doing especially when i switch my wardrobe from one season to another i like to care a little bit extra for those pieces that i've been wearing a lot so that they're ready to put to use again next time I want to wear them. Something you want to make sure to do when you're using the fabric shaver is to empty it quite frequently, otherwise it won't be very effective and the whole like shaving machine in here will, will completely stop working if it's, it's, if it's completely filled with, with fuss and bubbles. So that's something you really want to remember to do. Uh, use the little brush that it comes with and very clean it very thoroughly. <laughs> So I'm almost done with my knitwear now. Also just uh, removed bubbles on the one that I'm wearing right now. Um, I think especially around the edges, where there's any like rib edges and just around the sleeves, underneath the sleeves as well, along any um, seams, especially under the arms. I think those are areas where there's, they're just naturally more prone to, to bubbles basically because you like rub the, the fabric. Yeah, you rub the fabric like this and then it will create more bubbles in those areas. Um, so I find that keeping especially those areas free from bubbles is a nice way to make sure that your knitwear looks nice and neat and sharp. Don't ever think my wool coat has ever looked this neat before. Do find it quite tricky with darker like wool items like this. Um, also my dark blue or my navy blue uh, jumper from Organic Basics to keep it 100% free from fuss, especially since I've got blonde hair. Uh, we've got a dog that's got like ginger, ginger fur. Um, so there will always be like some, some amounts of fuss and hair stuck on there, but it's definitely looking nice and neat now. There we go. Feels so great to put those back in their best shape so that they're now ready to be worn again. <sighs> so that took well around an hour just to remove bubbles on all of my knitwear, but now it's looking, whoa, right. But now they're all looking great. So before I just pack away my wool coat, I am just gonna fix the holes in the pockets. I doubt that I will be needing it anymore this year because as I just said, it is starting to warm up. We'll have 14 degrees tomorrow. I heard someone say 18 degrees as well very soon. So I think my trench coat and all of my lighter jackets and blazers will be fine for, for the next many months. Um, but yeah, before I pack it away, I just wanna make sure that it's 100% ready to put to use again next winter. So I'm just gonna fix up the pockets. Um, I don't really use any specific technique for this, obviously, um, because I'm using the sewing machine, the stitches will be visible um, because uh, this has been stitched up um, from like the inside out. So it would probably look nicer if I were to stitch it up by hand, but 
I'm taking the lacy way, the easy way, um, and just stitching it up right here along the edge um, on the sewing machine. And the stitches will be visible, but it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be hidden away inside of the, the coat. So it doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> I didn't have like a dark navy thread, um, so I just took like a, a dark blue one, which kind of clashes, but again, it's just an inside pocket, doesn't really matter, doesn't have to be perfect. And I also think that doing this on the machine instead of doing it by hand will actually make the stitches more um, more strong and durable, which is obviously very important when we're speaking of a pocket where you carry like your phone and keys and stuff. There we go, Ugh, what a relief. So I'm just gonna show you guys. This is our entrance hall, by the way. We painted it recently. Um, it used to just be plain white and boring. Um, but yeah, we have a little wardrobe in here with like all of our extra outerwear and stuff. So this used to be sort of like a pantry, but then we've turned it into a wardrobe for extra shoes and out of season outerwear. Uh, we have like our bags and bicycle helmets, all sorts of stuff out here. So I'm just gonna take my wool coat, put it on a hanger and then hang it in here and then it can hang there nice um, and ready for next winter. So I believe the washing machine just played its little song to notify me that it's now done washing my jeans. So I'm just gonna take those out and then show you guys the results of the color refresh. This is what the machine looks like afterwards. Like I said before, you just need to take a, a cloth to just wipe away some of like the excess color here. You can run like an empty cycle as well just to make sure that the washing machine is all clean. So here are the jeans. This is a knee area and as you can see it's looking a lot better. They're looking a lot more like jet black now than they did before. They do have some small stains of like, I think this might be white paint, which can't come off. <laughs> but overall, I think they look very nice now and these like small stains, maybe, maybe I can see if I can like dot them with some sort of like a, a black marker or something to make them less visible. I'm not really sure what to do there, but otherwise like in the bigger picture, you probably won't even notice. Just gonna sit myself down here again uh, before wrapping up the video. I will be checking in, I think, tomorrow, just with a little snippet of that white top to, to just let you guys know if it worked or not um, with the vanish and the, and the sun, sun lotion stains, because I'm sure some of you would like to know how I get rid of those stains. Um, anyway, I just quickly wanted to show you, this is kind of unrelated to this video, but kind of related still, because I did just give, give these boots uh, some leather care yesterday, so I can sort of talk you guys through what I did there. Um, again, no buy, as you guys know, I'm doing a no buy. And I knew this when I started the no buy challenge, that this would definitely be one of the areas where I sort of had, or not had to, but where I would was definitely gonna break the no buy challenge. And that was when I would stumble upon a pair of perfect angle length boots with a block heel that would be a perfect like crossover boot both for daytime and nighttime. Um, I've been wearing my Acne Jensen boots for the past six years. Six years, I think, yeah. Yeah, it might be six years. Um, and I bought them pre-loved, so they have been worn for, for quite some time when I bought them. Um, and they're just looking like they're not looking very well anymore like they the soles have come off multiple times I've had them glued together both by myself and my cobbler So I've actually downgraded those boots now I'm gonna keep them still because sometimes um, I like to go to festivals or like uh, concerts Especially during summertime. I love wearing boots with a little dress and that's like a, the ultimate like festival chic outfit for me So I've sort of just downgraded them But I'll keep them and then maybe I'll just need to bring like a little tube of glue with me when I wear them <laughs> or just make sure that they're glued together before I leave from home um, but yeah in any case I was really missing like that pair of perfect classic ankle boots in my wardrobe so found them this is uh, the eight uh, Leandra boots I think 
Not sure if I pronounce the name correctly, but some of you might know the brand. Um, it's a it's a Berlin-based brand, and they make uh, the most beautiful shoes. And as far as I know, they're responsibly made as well. So they the whole like goal with their shoes is for them to be in high quality. So it is a I would say slightly higher price range, um, definitely along the lines of Acne Studios. And yeah, I just think it is the perfect pair of daytime and nighttime boots. Uh, they're a bit higher than the Acne Jensen boots that I had before, but I actually really like that. I find that they're very elegant. Um, like the fact that the, um, the shaft, is that what it's called? Not really sure, is it called the shaft? Anyway, that is a bit higher, it comes a bit higher up on the leg. Uh, I think my Acne Jensen boots would probably stop around here. So in terms of wearing crop jeans and pants during winter, these will actually cover up a lot more of my legs. So that's definitely worth thinking about as well if you're looking for a pair of new um, boots. Um, so this video is not about my new boots, it's actually about how to care for your wardrobe. So what I did yesterday and what I did before even uh, putting these to use was that I just gave them a bit of leather lotion. So I used this one at the moment, I just apply it to like a little sponge. Don't really remember where I got this one from. Uh, it's essentially just like a really soft kind of sponge. I guess you can use a, a cloth as well, just like a, yeah, any little cloth that you might have laying around that you can use for that purpose. And then I just distribute it all over the boot. I massage it into, especially here where they will get like um, these like crackles all naturally from when you start wearing them. Um, and I will do that repeatedly for, you know, almost every time I wear them for the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months even, just to make sure that the leather stays nice and soft. And so that I make sure that here where they will start getting these like natural cracks, um, they won't be super dry and they, it, it will, they will age beautifully. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So I will do that regularly and I will do that with any of my leather boots. I'll do the same with like my leather jackets, even my leather pants and then just leave them out to dry. Would never recommend washing your leather pants. I would take them to a dry cleaner or a leather specialist if you really want to get them cleaned somehow. Um, I got this from Oh My Bag. I did a collaboration with them a couple of years ago. Oh My Bag is a Dutch bag company that makes um, responsibly responsibly made leather bags. Um, so you can buy this, as far as I know, you can still buy this on their website, along with the Supreme Wax Spray, which is essentially a spray that you spray on your bags and shoes, let it dry for a couple of minutes, and then you rub it with a cloth and then it will get nice and shiny and protected as well. Uh, before I wrap up, I'm just gonna try on my navy blue blazer for you guys so you can see um, what the, the problem area with that one is. And I think I'll probably keep you guys updated over on Instagram regarding that blazer because my, my local tailor, she's actually on maternity leave at the moment and I think her, um, her shop will open again in April, so... We'll have to wait and see if she can help me. So this is the blazers from Paul Smith. I bought it pre-loved on West Year Collective last year. Um, like I said before, I adore this blazer. I love that it's sort of like a navy check and it's just a slightly less heavy alternative to my black blazer. Problem is that it's quite tight around the shoulder area. So especially when I do like this, it's quite tight. It's quite tight around the arms here as well. Um, so I'm not sure how much seam allowance there will be inside of the seams because that will ob obviously be what will determine whether my tailor is able to let it out a bit or not. Um, but I guess, yeah, I'll have to wait and see when she gets back how much bigger she can actually make it. I don't think it's, it's a lot that she needs to, to let it out. Um, we're speaking maybe just a couple of centimeters, maybe even one centimeter. Um, yeah, we'll see what she can do. Hello guys, it is now Thursday morning. It's currently 7.30, so quite early in the morning. Um, I'm actually on my way out the door to go to work, but I just remember that I wanted to check in, or I promised to check in regarding that white top that I kind of soaked in the vanish and water solution. So I've just laid the top out flat here on the table. I might show you it on as well. Obviously it needs a steam. 
um, but I am gonna pack it away just a few more months until the weather really starts warming up because to me again this is really more of a summer piece especially because it has all of these like little holes just a bit too a bit too cold to wear this now um, but yeah as you can see it looks better um, at least it does in real life. There's still a little bit of yellow like tinges somewhere um, Especially around here and around the neck on the inside here a little bit around the edges here underneath the arm could probably be because of my deodorant um, So overall, I think it worked and I think I might um, Just wash it one more time next time. I'm washing wipes and then I'm gonna leave it outside in the sunshine and then the sun can sort of do the rest is at least what I, I'm hoping that it will. So just before I am heading off to work, just wanted to quickly show you this cute top. Um, this is my outfit for today. By the way, I'm wearing just a classic white button down shirt with the outfit, but definitely how I could potentially style this top during summer, maybe just with a pair of elegant sandals or a pair of espadrilles even. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to my blog to find the no buy checklist and the sub challenge for next month. And also keep on sharing your journey over on Instagram with the hashtag. I find it super inspiring to see how you guys are taking on the challenge. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all very soon for another video. Bye guys.